Our text is the gospel lesson for today from the 11th chapter of Matthew. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dear family and friends of Fog Towers, it is an honor and a privilege for me to be officiating at this service. Your request for me to officiate to Ada, Pastor Peppercorn granted because he said, Pastor Meyer, you've known this family for a thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. Still, there are memories from Trinity Lutheran Church, from the youth group outings to Kamloops, and the pilot of our boat was Bob. Backpacking with some of you in the Trinity Alps with Bob. Bible classes, Sunday school classes, seminary support, roof removal, and baptisms. And then there are your memories, right up to the last two days of Bob's life. And Pastor Peppercorn praying Psalm 23 and reading Matthew 11. Memories of Bob for us singing in the service, including chanting with the pastor on his parts. <laughs> and then Bob's labored breathing before he came to rest. And all of those images are wrapped up in and around the words of Jesus. And so these words of Jesus, and there's so much more to these words that are our text. What strikes me is Jesus calling us little children. <clears throat> In the Bible, Jesus calls us many things. The second chapter of Hebrews, he says he's not ashamed to call us brothers. A little bit of challenge for you humans. At the end of Matthew, that word that's behind, you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth, is really that Greek word called martyrs. Not another comfortable thing. But then we get to John's account, and he calls us friends. <coughs> that one we can identify with readily. And then here in this text, he calls us little children. The Apostle John call all the members of the congregations of Asia Minor, my little children. But here, Jesus is speaking to you and me in baptismal language. Baptismal language, that's what we're reminded of in the funeral service. Bob was baptized, a child of God, adopted into the family of God, a child of God, God's little child. From 1957 on, Bob sat at the feet of Jesus, learning about life with God. And Bob lived that life. He learned the secrets of God's family. You know those secrets that Jesus says he's glad he's hidden from all those know-it-alls who think they understand everything about the secrets of spiritual life, or all of those who feign false wisdom and say, God is so big, we can't begin to comprehend it. God knew God the Father, and knew that God the Father was the creator of heaven and earth, and still ruled him. And he knew that Jesus of Nazareth was not just a man, but was God in the flesh, and his Savior. God in the flesh, who was living among us to teach us that there's so much more to life than just what is here on earth. So Bob could say, the last time that I communed him, I want to go home and get this thing over with. Bob's labor and heavy burden was not just in the last days. Jesus knows what time and sin and sickness can do to us. And Bob knew the weight of sin and the heavy burden of sin and what sickness had placed on him. He had the rest of Jesus. 
Jesus forgave Bob's sin and the guilt of the sin and kept him in the family of God and now gives him rest as he awaits that day when the new body and the new spirit will be to join together in the resurrection of the body for life everlasting. And as the epistle says, comfort one another with these words. Because you need comfort. Jesus knows not only what God knew about what sin and time and sickness can do, Jesus knows what death can do too. And Jesus knows that you need comfort. At this time, you grasp for comfort. We come up with all sorts of images about a better place, about better off. We get any kind of comforting image of what heaven may be like at this point for Rome. But all of that disappears. You have comfort. You know this with Christ. But at the same time, you have no comfort. Because Bob is not here. You not only have to live with the emptiness his death leaves, Bob's death is stolen from you, his presence. Got the clean of saying, that's why you said, Amen. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Because it is. It's the hardest thing for you. The things that you plan, events, words, hopes for the next day or the next time, they're gone. And what does Jesus say? Jesus says, come to me, you who grieve. You who hurt. You who just don't understand. Come to me and learn from me. Come to me and let me comfort you with the words of my presence. Because you can be certain that Jesus' word is what will give you what you need. Forgiveness of your guilt, a good conscience in Christ, eventual peace, and the certainty of eternal life. And Jesus also says, let me come and comfort you. Comfort you, you among these brothers and these sisters in Christ, the body of Christ, the church. I promise not to leave you or forsake you in this time or in the future. For you are my little children whom I love. In Jesus' name.